Hello and welcome back to the channel. I hope this video finds you well. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you tips that will improve your arena game no matter what rank you are. You could be a brand new player or a top 100 player, but I think any one of these tips will help you improve. Tip number one is to always count your opponent's energy. Now, I'm sure you've heard this a million times from various videos, guides, or even your friends that brought you into the game, but I cannot stress enough how important this is. It helps you understand what possible options your opponent has and how much damage they can deal. For example, if the opponent has 4 energy and they have a backdoor move, might be tri spikes or a little out, they're then capable of going with that backdoor move and that's something that you've got to consider when deciding what play you're going to make. Tip number 2 is to always keep track of your opponent's cue cards. Now this is a concept that's been around in Axie Infinity for over a year, but not one that the average player has really picked up. Cue cards are particularly influential moves, for example, backdoors, energy steals, or even high damage and high shield moves. As with knowing how much energy your opponent has, cue cards are important to keep track of as they reduce the number of outcomes you have to consider and so allow you to make a better decision. Tip number three is to always look at your opponent's cards at the beginning of a match. This allows you to A, identify their cue cards and B, have some idea of how they are going to approach the match and then how you are going to approach the match in order to counter that. This sort of plan may change throughout the game depending on how the early game goes, what cards you draw, etc. But it's always good to at least have an idea so that you can plan effectively. So how do you keep track of cue cards? Well, in Axie Infinity, each deck has 24 cards. This is made up of two cards from each of your Axie's parts. You can draw randomly from this initial deck. So how you can think about it is, is once you've drawn two of any one card that can no longer come up in the opponent's hand before their deck reset. This tends to happen around round five or six as that's when the opponent would have drawn 24 of their cards. This can however reset in even round 4 if an opponent has an Axie die very early on, as then they'd be drawing from only a 16 card deck. Tip number 4 is to memorise how much damage your cards and later on your opponent's cards deal. This is something I don't often see spoken about but is essential to the top levels of arena. In combination with knowing how much energy your opponent has and keeping track of their cue cards, knowing how much damage specifically they can deal helps you make the best decision in each situation. You can do this through either A, having a look at Flowbot's damage calculator, uh, where you can put in the class of the Axie that's using the card and what class they're attacking against, and it will tell you how much damage uh, the move would do with or without combo bonus. Or you can learn the damage of your own moves simply by playing the game and keeping track of how much damage they do in each situation and against each class. Tip number five is to analyze your own replays and replays of higher level players that play similar teams to yours so that you can identify any mistakes you're making consistently and try and fix them. I'm now going to play a match with a team that relies heavily upon knowing how much energy your opponent has, what cue cards they have in hand and of course how much damage they can deal. Okay so we have a match against somebody who I've actually faced a fair bit last season. Um, from what I can remember, they like to defend their tank, and of course they've got this massive heal with the um, with the herbivore. So you're going to be very wary of giving them value for their herbivore. Um, they have the steals on the beast, which we're slightly worried about, but I don't think we're worried enough to go with uh, a watering can serious round one. But would I, might have to eat my words in a couple of seconds here. Okay, fortunately not. Uh, now. Just going to put up a sh big shield on our on our tank because we know that a he could come through with a lot of damage and b he could also put up shield in doing so because he's got the five energy and that's a lot of damage coming through from this beast okay so it seems the opponent softly defended their tank uh as we did but they only spent one energy so we'll steal one back and we'll be on even energy which means next round we're both going to be sitting at five again that is a pretty handy crit uh bit of extra damage never hurts so now uh, we still don't really have the best play because with this team, of course, you don't want to be using eggshells unless you know you can survive against whatever damage they can put up. So we don't want to be using eggshells yet. And we also don't really want to use a Sarastus aggressively against a tank. That's more of a, a shield move. So we have a decision to either try and survive with our tank uh, and follow up doing something like this, or we just completely pass. And so... As we know they are at 5 energy, um, they are pretty easily able to kill our tank, so I'm actually going to opt for a complete pass, because I wouldn't want to give value to his brick wall, which is probably coming, and then follow up beast moves. He's gone with a lot of damage there, so although we may have been able to get the kill on his uh, his t plant tank, 
we also would have put ourselves in a really rough situation. Okay, so he gets the steel, puts him at three energy next round, which means he is able to kill our uh, our reptile if we don't put up shield. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the one hair from the bird, um, and then go with the rice and double Serastis. So this play is expecting some shield out of the opponent, um, and it's also it also covers three beast cards. And if they do try to steal from us, if, as we've seen one of these energy steals from the opponent, which is a Q card to keep track of, we know that they might still have a second. So what we've done is we've left an energy on the table. As you can see, we've got two here. So if they do choose to steal, we'll steal it back with our rice and put ourselves back up in an energy lead. Okay, so they have gone with a slight brick wall. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we'll get the kill here. Um, so we've got to see how much energy they've used as to what play we make next round. Okay, so they actually spent all of their energy. They ge generated one uh, because we triggered their carrot, but we did then steal that pack. So not the end of the world. Um, and here we're going to make a bit of a, a weird play. Um, so because our reptile's low, what we're really worried about here is a couple of beast cards coming through. So we're going to play an eggshell from our bird and then this, this, um, this balloon just to make sure we get the kill and then try and kill their beast with um, with our Kataros and you know the rice and the follow-up damage. The only scenario this doesn't work well in is if they read this and they play a double Tiny Dino, which will deal just enough to kill us because I think it's one uh, five five a piece. Well, not one five, one sixty a piece. So, luckily, uh, well, not luckily, but as as we'd hoped, they've gone with beast cards and they've even gone with a steal. So once again, we left an energy on the table for us to then steal back. Um, I don't think we'll quite get the kill, but they'll at least be. Uh, lasted or, or very low. Um, oh, okay, with that crit. That crit's actually very annoying because now we have to spend two cards instead. Um, so what we're going to do there is, because our bird's already low, um, I think we're just going to play play into it anyway and then try and get some chip damage on their backliner. <laughs> Okay, so they've gone with their two attacks. We might not even last stand here. Okay, we will last stand, which gives us some hope um, because we will chip this guy a bit. And as long as we redraw our um, our hair combo, we should be able to, I think, get a kill. Because the maximum amount of shield the opponent can put up here is going to be 180 or 1 or 80 80. That's 160, but they get 10% bonus, so you can be 88 on top of that. Uh, well, not actually 88 because this is a dusk, so you get 7.5% bonus. So I think what they'll come out with is about 170 if they put up that. Um, and they know that with a double Indian star, they can't get the kill on us. So what's more likely is that they play uh, an Indian star, which is this bulwark card, and then either a wooden stab or a tiny swing. Uh, so I think in that case, we would be able to have enough damage to get the kill. And there we go. We do have enough to get the kill. But whether we win or not is the question. I think if they've ordered this, e either way they order this, we'd last stand. Nice. Okay, so we get the win. And that was a very tight game. And you saw a lot of those decisions were made off knowing how much energy they had, whether they'd used their rice or not from the midliner, and then trying to piece together what we're expecting them to do, and then countering their play. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe. As always, if you've got any feedback or suggestions, leave them in the comments. I'll see you in the next one.